Hello everyone. In this particular lecture, we are going to discuss on coordination compounds. Whenever we say coordination compounds, it is directly related to the word complex salts. What are those important topics that are supposed to be discussed when we go through coordination compounds? This topic, which are to be discussed in coordination compounds, involve different complex salts, their electronic configuration, geometry associated with them, stabilization and the crystal field stabilization energy associated with each of them. Over and above, apart from these points, there are many associated points which will come as and when we go through the topic of coordination compounds. Let us first understand that whenever we say coordination compounds, there are several different types of coordination compounds that can exist. But among those existing coordination compounds, there are five basic types of complex salts which are very frequently required when we are discussing coordination compounds with entrance exam point of view. For example, the first type is K4 Fe Cn6. This is one type of complex salt. The second type of complex salt is FeCn6 4 minus. Fundamentally, if we look into these two structures, probably they look similar, but they are not completely similar because the first one that we have written is a neutral complex by nature, whereas the second one which we have written is an anionic complex by nature. Similarly, if we move a step ahead and think about the third structure we have, it is CONH36 Cl3. The fourth structure we have is CONH36 3 plus. So even these two structures look similar but are not similar. This is a neutral complex, whereas this one is now a cationic complex. So in complex or in coordination compounds, there are several examples that we are supposed to learn, that we are supposed to discuss. And you still have some very popular type like NiCO4, which is a totally neutral complex. But if you think for all these five types that are demonstrated over here, none of the type matches with each other. Each is a different type and which will later help us draw their IUPSC nomenclature and effective atomic number. So there are several topics involved in coordination compounds that are useful to us. But the very first thing that we should be able to understand is understanding this complex compound, understanding this coordination compound. So let us take one simple example and first of all understand this coordination compound. I am taking the example K4 Fe Cn6. While taking this as a coordination compound, this is fundamentally called central atom and it is a metal. So, it is a central metal atom. Generally, this metal falls in the category of transition series and as of now when we are concerned let us think of 3d transition series along with this metal this square bracket represents the coordination area it is the coordination area and over here you have you donor. This donor in coordination compounds generally are of three type. They are neutral molecule, they are anion and in very rare case they are cationic. But generally these donors are either neutral or anionic that is either neutral or negatively charged. 
these donors are popularly known as ligands so we are very much aware that these donors will now be known as ligands ligands are those donors which are either negatively charged or neutral capable of donating electron pair to the central metal atom to complete its geometry and through a coordinate covalent bond the cation outside this square bracket that is the coordination area or the coordination site is generally known as counter ion now friends counter ion can be positive that is a cation even counter ions are found to be negative that is an ion we will take an example CONH36Cl3 here your cobalt is the central atom NH3 is your ligand and this Cl minus 3 times is your counter ion so whether you take the first example whether you take the second example both these examples suggests you two important thing that whenever we are talking of a coordination compound or a complex salt there is always a central atom present which is surrounded by some donor molecules or donor anions which are called ligands and for establishing electrical neutrality they either have cations or they either have anions this was a bit of introduction which is always needed before we move on to the details but once we are clear with these we will still pass 4 to 5 minutes in one more detail and after that we will directly strike to the competitive exam questions or topics related to this as we are using the word ligands we should be aware of the different type of ligands so let us just see the different type of ligands friends remember very well that whenever you say that you are interested in different type of ligands ligands are divided or classified based on its denticity sometimes this popular word comes denticity denticity is its capacity of donating electron pair now who can donate electron pair a negatively charged anion can donate electron pair even sometimes a neutral molecule can donate electron pair so based on the capacity or based on the number of electron pairs that you donate your ligands can be classified if you are donating only one pair of electron it is classified as unidentate ligands if you are sufficient enough to donate two pair it is bidentate if more than two pair we call it tridentate and sometimes to the maximum of its capacity we write it as polydentate in polydentate as per as your syllabus is concerned we have only one example that is a hexadentate ligand and we all are aware of this hexadentate ligand edta that is ethylene diamine tetraacetate these ligands as discussed earlier have the capacity of donating one pair of electron but they can be anion they can be neutral molecules as of now we are not talking about cationic donors or cationic ligands let us focus only on the two the negative and the neutral whenever we say the neutral ligands it is the h2o 
the H2S, the ammonia molecule, the NO that is the nitrosyl and CO that is the carbonyl. These five examples, no matter how many lone pairs they have, but as the lone pairs are directional, only one pair will donate or will be donated and therefore these ligands will be always identified as neutral unidented ligands. So if someone ever asks us that what are neutral unidented ligands? H2O, H2S, NH3, NO that is nitrosyl and CO that is carbonyl are few examples among the neutral unidented ligands and always remember that all neutral ligands are chargeless. They do not have any charge. They are chargeless. So over here also this neutral unidented ligand is a chargeless ligand. But if we do not constrain ourselves to the neutral unidented ligand and think of negative unidented ligands, we have very popular examples like chloride, bromide, iodide, fluoride, cyanide, hydroxy and even CH3CWO- that is acetate. So few of these examples that I have mentioned over here Chloride, cyanide, hydroxide, acetate ion, chloride, bromide, iodide belong to the class of negative unidented ligand. So their denticity is 1 and their charge is minus 1. So remember very well over here that when I say that unidented ligands negatively charged, their denticity will be 1 and their charge will be minus 1. But if I say neutral unidented ligands, their denticity will be 1 but their charge will be zero. They do not have any charge. They are chargeless. Denticity is the amount of electron pairs that they can donate. And when I say it's a unidentate, it means they can donate one pair of electrons. Let us move ahead in this same set of discussion. And let us start the discussion with the bidentate. In this bidentate ligands also, we have two category that is the negative category and the neutral category. But the thing is that whatsoever be the category, two electron pair are supposed to be donated you will be able to donate two electron pairs. For negative bidentate ligands, you have sulphate, you have carbonate, you have sulphite. These are some of the popular examples that involve the negative bidentate ligands. Even oxalate falls under this category. Why? Because this oxalate has two negative charge and negative charge over here represents a total of two electrons, mind well, one of its own and one that is obtained when the other part leaves as a cation. So it will swiftly be able to donate two electron pairs and therefore as we know that when your ligand has the capacity of donating two electron pairs, you always fall under the category of bidentate ligands. And if you are negatively charged, it's a negative bidentate ligand. When we think of this neutral bidentate ligand, there is a very popular example that we have. Ethane 1 to diamine. Sometimes we will feel that this initial part what we are discussing belongs to the higher secondary education. 
so you are absolutely right but this becomes the base when we are going for the phd entrance test so is ethan going to die a mind en en is its a symbol of representation what symbol you have as ox minus 2 ox minus 2 for this oxalate similar kind of a symbol ox minus 2 even sometimes there is another example that is propane 13 diamine even this is a bidentate because over here also you have two lone pairs to be donated so if you say that bidentate neutral ligands you have en and even you have pn ethane 12 diamine and propane 13 diamine similarly friends if we are still moving a step ahead and thinking of tridentate ligands in the case of tridentate ligands again while thinking of the negatively charged tridentate ligands you have phosphate ion and arsenate ion so phosphate ion and arsenate ion but if you say tridentate neutral you have a very popular example propane triamine see it is propane diamine ptn it becomes propane triamine ch2 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 nh2 nh2 now if i want to put a third nh2 over here i must balance the valency so all the three nitrogen have one one lone pair of electron and that single single lone pair of electron will be donated towards the metal and hence for the act as a tridentate ligand so if you look into carefully our base for preparing the questions of competitive exam is ready how is it ready we started with complex salt and coordination salt before we could we could go and attempt the questions we just saw that there are always a central metal atom encompassed in a coordination site which is drawn by a square bracket having ligands which are donors can be negative can be neutral and in special cases can be positive to this to neutralize this whole molecule you have either positively charged compounds or sometimes even negatively charged anions and then talking about the donors we had different type of ligands that we discussed whether it was a unidentate a bidentate tridentate and now we will be moving towards the last example that is polydentate ligands and in polydentate ligands we have only one case to be taken into consideration that is hexadentate and that hexadentate is ethylene diamine tetraacetate it is hexadentate the donor site are 6 the donor site are 6 but the charge is so this is the difference there are six donor sites but the charge is four negative this is the difference so friends this was some of the basic thing which you all might have got from your lower standards but this was important today before i could go solving different question based on complex solids which are frequently asked in the exam so let us begin with few topics in complex salt that can be asked so now i am starting with the topics first thing that i'll involve over here is the electronic configuration plus the oxidation state and the effective atomic number this three will be the first set of things that i would wish that we should discuss So let us start let us start with the first example and that example is k4 fe cn6 
whenever you identify a complex salt in coordination compound always first of all identify the ligand the ligand over here is unidentate and as it is cn minus it is negatively charged so no matter its denticity is one it will only donate one pair of electron at a time but its charge will be minus one so this minus one charge will help us determine the oxidation state of fe the metal so from this coordination site or coordination area we have determined the ligand now we should think of the counter ion that is placed outside always remember if the counter ion is on the left side of the coordination site or coordination area it will always be cation and if it is on the right side of the coordination area be sure that it is always an anion this is fixed you cannot make any changes over here and we all know that potassium is plus 1 always being in the class of alkali metals so there is a simple mathematics that we know that k4 fecn6 when gets dissociated it is 4k plus and fecn6 Four minus. Where did this four minus come from? Because as this is electrically neutral, it is only possible to be neutral if this four plus charge is balanced by writing four minus charge, and this is how it becomes stable. So now I have this molecule in the form of an anion FeCN six. to the power 4 minus now our first task is to calculate the oxidation state so let us solve this first task first oxidation state so we are supposed to find the oxidation state of fe we know that there are six sino each sino is minus 1 and if you have some value on the square bracket or on the top of the square bracket as a superscript you should always write it on the right hand side now if we try to solve this question we will always end up writing fe minus 6 is equal to minus 4 and therefore fe is equal to minus 4 plus 6 that is plus 2 so here the oxidation state is plus 2 so now we are able to find out the oxidation state once we have the oxidation state available with us we can go both the ways means you can even go for effective atomic number you can even go for electron configuration why or how so let us check if i say electronic configuration even you know very well and even i am very well aware about the normal electronic configuration of fe what is that fe is atomic number 26 so you will have argonate in 3d6 4s2 4p0 and 4d0 why you can just make the summation it is 18 6 24 and 2 26 but when you write it as fe 2 plus why because you got it over here you could see that it has two oxidation states so i am supposed to remove two electrons from that fe at that time always remember that electron first vanishes from 4s and then and then you can remove electron from 3d so your first choice for the removal of electron would be 4s therefore argon 3d6 4s0 4p0 4d0 so friends you have this as your electronic configuration so this will be your electronic configuration so the second very easy but important part is 
this and now let us think for the third one that is the effective atomic number we will always calculate effective atomic number as sum of electron of metal atom in the complex in its actual state i'll explain you what i am writing plus number of ligands multiply by its coordination number and coordination number over here is believed to be number of electrons it can donate sum of electron of metal in the complex in its actual state it means if i am calculating the effective atomic number for k4 fe c and 6 what was our actual question then i am very much aware that fe in my complex is in the plus 2 state so ideally it had 26 electrons but as it is in plus 2 state i have to subtract 2 so i'll have 24 electrons plus how many ligands i have our question was k4 fe c n 6 so the number of ligand is 6 and this is a unit entity ligand so each ligand will donate only two electrons and therefore it is 24 plus 12 and it is 36 now remember if the total number over here matches to the total number of electrons of inert gases then we can say that it obeys effective atomic number we very well know that helium neon argon krypton xenon and radon you have krypton 36 xenon 54 and radon 86 yes it is matching to the total number of electrons of the nearest inert gas krypton and henceforth we can say that it is obeying the effective atomic number so this was the first type of question where we can determine three things electronic configuration oxidation state and the very important effective atomic number now let us just check for a few examples and then move ahead effective atomic number cnh36 cl3 na3mn h2o6 sorry it is not h2o6 it is f6 let us calculate the effective atomic number for both this question if i say co na3 6 cl3 i can say co to be in the plus 3 state because na3 is zero cl is minus 3 so on the top of this bracket you will have plus 3 co plus 0 into 6 is equal to plus 3 therefore co is equal to plus 3 so over here the cobalt has an plus 3 oxidation state so the ideal electronic configuration of cobalt is 3d7 4s2 but when the same cobalt goes to plus 3 oxidation state it becomes argon 3d6 4s0 so this is its electronic configuration so the first thing is very clear argon 3d6 4s0 cobalt initially having 27 electron but now because of its plus 3 state has only 24 electrons your ligand has two electrons to be donated as it is unit entity ligand one pair equal to two electron and six such ligands so 6 into 2 and friends it is 12 plus the initial number 24 
you will end up with 36. Surely yes, it obeys effective atomic number. And it follows the effective atomic number rule. Let us go for this second example. As you have a cation over here, the charge over here will be negative when you remove it. So, will be Mn plus 6 into minus 1 is equal to minus 3. Therefore, Mn is equal to minus 3 plus 6 plus 3. Now, remember very well that if Mn is plus 3, then its electronic configuration has to be argonate in CD5 4S2, a normal Mn. But if I write Mn plus 3, I will remove 3 electrons. Argonate in CD4 4S0. And when I say argon 18, 3D4, 4S0, this is its electronic configuration. Initially, there were 25 electrons. If I am removing 3, I am quite sure that the electron will be 22. So now, when I have 22 electrons, each ligand capable of donating 2 electrons and 6 such ligands, the answer is 34 and it does not obey the effective atomic number rule. Sometimes there is a multiple choice question that among the following complex which do not obey the effective atomic number rule, you have to calculate in this manner and once you calculate in this manner, you will be very easily able to understand and answer the question that which of the following do not obey or rather obey the effective atomic rule. So, I will just mention few examples over here which can be calculated, which will give you answer and there are sometimes pairs which are very important. For example, K4 FeCN6 and K3 FeCN6. These are the two examples. If you will calculate, you will surely get an idea that one obeys the rule, another does not obey the rule. How? I will go a little fast. Over here it is Fe2, over here it is Fe3. If it is Fe2, originally there were 26 electrons. If I am subtracting 2, I will end up with 24 electrons. Originally there were 26 electrons, 3 means deleting 3, I will end up with 23 electrons. Both have 6 ligands and the ligand is unidentate. So only donating 1 electron pair and therefore 2 electrons, so 2 multiply by 6, 2 multiply by 6, so 12 on both the sides. So over here it is 36, over here it is 35. So we can very well say that the first one obeys the effective atomic number, the second one does not obey the effective atomic number. So this is where the effective atomic number questions can be solved. This is how the questions of effective atomic number can be concluded. So this was our type 1 that is if we keep on noting somewhere that the task that is understood in the coordination complex class today is the first one effective atomic number. Hope we are clear with effective atomic number. Now, let us move with something important, something different. As we are done with effective atomic number, we have the idea about the complexes. Now, if we think of the geometry of complexes, there are ML4 and ML6 type of geometry present. ML6 has only one possible geometry that is octahedral. Whereas if I say ML4, there are minimum two geometry possible, of which one is square planar and second one is tetrahedral. If we say that we are or our molecule is pursuing the square planar geometry, its hybridization has to be DSP2. 
and if it is pursuing the tetrahedral geometry its hybridization has to be sp3 so even the hybridization determines the geometry or the geometry can help us determine the hybridization if i think of ml6 i am clear that it is an octahedral geometry but it will ha also have two different hybridization sp3 d2 and d2 sp3 there are an ample of theory relating the strong field ligand and the weak field ligand and those theory will help us set our answers for dsp2 d2 sp3 and sp3 d2 depending on what kind of ligand you have we will be coming to that portion but as of now we should know that we are supposed to learn the dsp2 hybridization sp3 hybridization and the sp3 d2 or the d2 sp3 hybridization so if i just scroll back to the initial part from where we started the discussion today if you check into the things that were done over here we can say that definitely we are quite sure about the effective atomic number and a simple electronic configuration apart from this we are left with geometry hybridization cfs this will be a total one session and there will be a different session for other unattended topics from this main chapter or main topic coordination components so i hope that this particular portion is clear to you these are few of the ligands that i have mentioned over here and many such ligands are possible but the take home message from this video to the maximum extent can be the effective atomic number and the overview of the geometry and hybridization which is going to be our second session or second lecture if you have any queries you can just ping me up for your feedback the comment box is always open but prepare well prepare hard for the exams and wait for the next video thank you